Hey guys, welcome back to Superpower User. My name is Stanley, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at inside the TVS A82 ST3 NAS from QNAP and installing a 32 gigabyte module from Crucial. So this NAS is an eight bay NAS with two and a half inch SSDs uh, and is a Thunderbolt 3 and 10 gigabit interface NAS. Uh, I made a video all about this, and if you want to know more about it, you can check that out in the card up here, or I'll make sure to link in this description down below. And so in order to open up this NAS, you've got three screws in the back. So all you need to do is to take off the screws. One, two, and three. It's very convenient to be able to take this whole thing apart uh, with just three screws. And what you do is you slide this back and you know there's tabs in here that disengage and you can basically just lift this thing off. Put that aside. What you've got here is a i7 uh, 6700 HQ Intel processor with your memory modules right here. You, you can see the Intel uh, bracket right here. And up here on the other side, you've got your Thunderbolt 3 card and your Intel network card, 10 gigabit network card. You can see here, I've actually disconnected the fan module for this card and this is because this fan is a little bit on the high pitched end and basically all of this space is basically a Intel X550 T2 network card. And if you look at all the X550 T2 network cards, they are passive. There's a little heat sink on it and they run passively. This is completely overbuilt for the card. So you know, there's a big piece of aluminum on here, uh, a heat sink, and it really doesn't need the fan. It doesn't really need the um, extra cooling. And besides, I'm not using that, I'm not transferring that much. So anyway, uh, if you find that this is a little bit on the loud side, you can just pull that fan and everything, and it'll run just fine. On the other hand here, you've got the power supply, and it's you know quite a big power supply for something so compact, but it's a two, it's a 120, it takes up both 120 volts or 240 volts, and it's a 60 watt power supply. So that's to drive all your, you know, drives, to power all your drives. Back here, you can see you've got, you know, 120 millimeter fan, and you've got the cages and the back plate, back back panel for your SSDs to slot into. So here, you know, you can see the power supply powering the back panel, and then you've got uh, all your connections going into the motherboard. So this is basically your main motherboard right here. Uh, you also have a plastic sheet that's designed to make sure that when you take off, you know, the shell, you don't actually accidentally short circuit or touch or cut into the motherboard. That's mainly just a protection feature. So what we got here is the two memory modules. Uh, in its original configuration, this thing came with 16 gigabytes of memory. And it looks like these are the Kingston memory modules. Uh, as the SODIMM memory modules, basically laptop memory. And all you need to do is to take them out, you just you know, push on these and they basically pop right out. Very simple. You can see this memory module, this is what it looks like. It's basically a Kingston memory module, it's 16 gigs. Nothing special. Um, and we'll put those aside. What I've got here is the crucial 32 gigabyte kit. Basically, the same. Um, actually, I'm not entirely sure. 
The QNAP website rates this thing for the recommended replacement is a Kingston 16 gigabyte or 32 gigabyte module for 2400 megahertz. Skylake 6700HQ is only rated for 2100 megahertz. Of course, you know, you can overclock the memory and whatever, but uh, the base speed is 2100, 2133 megahertz. I think that these were actually 2133 chips. Uh, but for some reason, QNAP's website is pushing 2400 as the recommended replacement. So, mm, I don't know. Um, also, so that's why I actually picked up a 2400 kit. And the other reason why was the 2400 kit was cheaper than the 2133. You know, I guess they make more 2400s than 2133s. But even if this is a 2400 and it was only designed for 2133. It'll just down clock to 2100, 2133. It'll be fine. So uh, being a little bit faster speed uh, shouldn't be a problem. So anyway, I I'm saying that now. We'll see if this thing boots up. <laughs> we'll find out if it's a problem. Anyway, we'll open this thing up. You can see here, take a closer look here. Yeah. Uh, I think I took this one out first, so, or this one out second. So you, what you do is slot it in and then just push down and it locks into place. Very simple. And then for the other one, I think it's, you know, make sure there's a little notch here. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, you got memory notch, right? Just make sure that you align the notch. And once you do, make sure it's all in there and then push down and then you're done. Really simple. So with that done, we'll slide this thing back on and you can see the tabs here. You've got, it, it's always easier to take these things apart if you know what you're working with. You got two tabs on the bottom side two tabs on the top and two tabs on the other side. And you also have tabs here on the bottom. So uh, these are kind of tricky to deal with. Basically what you need to do is you know, put this on and once you have it on, you actually have to lift it a little bit to make sure that you get the bottom tabs slotted, pushed in and then pushed, pushed down and then slide this way so you can you know slide it in this is all lined up the key point is you have to make sure that this is flush uh, this cover is flush to the bottom so you can see I've got it all flush everything's locked in everything's good it's easier said than done um, and what you might have to find is you'll have to readjust it a couple times to make sure that everything clicks in once you have that in, just reassemble the screws. Ah, don't lose them. Oh man, I need a magnetic screwdriver. Magnetic screwdriver. And we're done. So we'll head over to the website um, or the interface and check out, boot this thing up to see if it works. Now that we've logged in here, we can switch it over to the computer. We'll take a look. And let's see, we'll take a look at the dashboard, hardware info, along with the monitor. Let's see, system info, we've got total memory, 32 gigabytes, 31 usable. So it looks like we've got full, you know, it's reading both, both channels, both dims, and then system memory, use 2.5 gigabytes right now, 31.34 gigabytes total of memory available to use. 28 gigabytes free, 
So yeah, uh, looks like this was successful. Uh, everything, the install went well, the computer looks good. Uh, maybe I'll do a scan of the memory just to make sure that they're, you know, the memory chips are actually good. But from what I'm seeing right now, the computer, uh, the NAS is recognizing all 32 gigabytes, both channels, both DIMMs are working fine. And you, know, you can see that the install it goes really simple, it's really quick and you know, trouble free. Um, anyway, the last thing I wanted to mention is that the TVS A82 ST3 uses both a laptop CPU and laptop memory, meaning the SODIMM memory form factor is the one that I needed to purchase for this NAS. Now, depending on the NAS that you have, uh, if you got a bigger NAS or one of those Ryzen um, NAS based NASs or the Intel NASs uh, with the desktop CPUs, for example, the 882T3 or the 1282T3, those use the desktop processors and desktop memory. So just make sure you go online and double check the type of memory you need and uh, the speeds that you need. The installation process is basically the same. You just pop off the cover, slot in your memory, and then boot it up and it should go. Uh, the other thing is to make sure you buy the standard DDR4 memory, meaning non-ECC memory. Only Xeon processors and very, very high-end Xeon D QNAP NASes support ECC memory. If you try popping an ECC memory into a you know, one of these normal NASs, it just won't boot. I've done that before, not realizing that the memory I had laying around was a, you know, ECC, and I, I scratched my head, why wasn't it booting? Well, duh, right? <laughs> anyway, so I do want to make one more video on the QNAP NAS I've got here, the, you know, the RAID setup, the, uh, the way I do cloud backups and the redundancies, and, you know, how, what are the cheapest ways to get that back up into the cloud. If that video sounds interesting to you, make sure to subscribe to get the notification once that video goes live. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to hit that like button. We'll see you in the next one.